In this lesson, I want to introduce you to a small but very useful node called the Pixar T. And I'm sure that once you understand its usefulness in production, you'll be using it on all your projects in the future. So what is this node for? Well, the Pixar T node allows you to create a custom AOV from any point in your material node graph. So unlike creating bespoke AOVs for materials and objects with either the Pixar Mat ID or the very cool Crypto Mat system within RenderMan, the Pixar T node gives you another creative tool within your rendering Swiss Army knife. It's also really useful for debugging your shaders networks as well. So for instance, if a pattern is not quite working as expected, you can insert a Pixar T node into that network and see what values are being produced at that point. Now, the Pixar T node has many creative uses, but on this bike frame, I've used it so I could see the result of my various procedural masks and export those as an AOV for added creative control in post-production. So before I demonstrate to you how to set up your own Pixar T nodes in RenderMan, let me show you inside of Nuke what I've used the Pixar T AOV for. So here I have a number of mat IDs for various parts of my bike. So here is the frame, and then this is the chrome, and then I've got the tires, and then here is where I isolate the bike frame from the background so I can do an adjustment to that. And then this is the engine, and then this is the leather on the seat and the saddlebag as well. And so this is how it came out of RenderMan. It's a little bit overexposed, and there's a few things I kind of want to adjust after I've rendered the image. So after I've run a number of color corrects and grade nodes using these mats, I end up with this picture here, which I'm much more content with. But one of the problems I started to realize is that the dirt within the crevices is actually very saturated. So let me show you what the Pixar T node has created for my grime AOV. You can see here that what I have in Nuke is this mask of all my grime and dirt that I created inside of RenderMan, and then I've used this Pixar T node to create a mat for it. And then if I plug it into a color correct, effectively all I'm doing inside of Nuke is I'm desaturating it. So I'm using this mask and I'm desaturating only the grime. So if I zoom in here for instance and I go one stage back you can see here that it's very rusty and it's very red and then using my Pixar T mask I can then desaturate it and I've got something which is visually much more pleasing and so that's one example of how I use the Pixar T node within my bike and now let me show you how you can set them up yourself so jumping back into Maya let's have a look at how I create the Pixar T node to drive my grime AOV and you can see here that I've got a series of nodes here, which is creating my dirt within the crevices. So I'm running this Pixar dirt, and then I'm using a few thresholds, and then I'm blending those together. And for those of you who have already spotted it, down here I have my Pixar T node. And it's creating my AOV name called Grime. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete it, because I want to show you how you can create your own from scratch. And then I also want to come here to the channel list, and I want to delete it from there as well. So now I've deleted my old Pixar T node for my grime. Let me drop in another one. And what it wants is it wants me to plug an input in. And because I know I want to take the output of this stream here, I can take my RGB out, and I can plug it into my input RGB. The next thing to understand about the Pixar T node is the output has to be plugged as well. So it has to be in the middle of a stream because this is how RenderMan picks up the AOV. So, so for instance here, all I really need to do is take my RGB out and I plug that into my layer mask for layer three. So once I've done that, the next thing I need to do is I need to define what my AOV is gonna be called. And in this instance, I'm gonna call it Grime, like so. So the next thing I need to do is I need to create my own custom AOV. And I do this very simply by pressing on the plus here, and I'm gonna call it grimy. So I've now created this AOV display channel, which is called grimy, and I need to create the actual AOV itself. And I very simply do this by clicking this button here, which effectively moves it from my available channels to this display channels, which is actually gonna be rendered. And when I do that, it's gonna ask me if I will need to create a new node, which I'm gonna go ahead and do. So now what you can see is it's created my display channel and it's called Grimy. But what I need to tell it is, well, what's the source of this AOV? And this is where the magic of the Pixar T node comes into it. And if you remember that we called our AOV name Grime, and all I need to do is define what the source of this channel. And in this case, it's called Grime. So just to quickly recap the steps. 
we create a Pixar T node. We define what the input is, and this is where we want to bake out effectively our AOV from. And then because this is a, like a pass through node, I then also connected it to my layer mask because I need this output here to also go into my layer. Now here, this is where I've defined what I want my AOV to be called. I create a custom channel. And then once I created my custom channel, I then added it to my display channels. And then the last step I need to do is I need to tell it what the source is for that channel. And in this case, it was Grime. So if I just bring the render up for you in it, you can see here that this is our final image and it has a bunch of AOVs in it. And yes, you can see here that we have our Grime AOV. And this is exactly the same channel and exactly the same mask as what I use in Nuke to refine and adjust my dirt and rust. And just before I finish this lesson, the other interesting thing about the Pixar T node is effectively it's acting like the solo mode within my IPR render. And I also use this in a similar way as the solo mode. So if you imagine that every time you press the solo node, the render has to sort of switch between the beauty and whichever the node you have decided to isolate. But actually, if you create these Pixar T nodes, the nice thing is that you don't have to keep switching solos on and off. So you can drop in a whole bunch of Pixar T nodes throughout your material node graph, which effectively work like visual bake points. So as you're working in your IPR and you're working on certain parts of your material, you can keep switching back into these custom AOVs, which you've created, and then you don't have to keep turning the solo modes on and off and refinding new places within your material graph. And so this has just been a little introduction to the Pixar T node. And I'm sure that the more you start to use it, the more you'll start to find it very, very useful within your productions. <laughs>